This video shows how a ciphertext was encrypted with the Enigma and which settings had to be made for each day. It also shows what a complete Enigma message consisted of, including the message header. There's a wonderful Enigma simulation on the internet, the virtual Enigma at virtualcolossus.co.uk. You can open it in your web browser and try everything out for yourself. After starting the simulation, you will see the closed Enigma. We open the lid and voila, there it is, the Enigma. You can open the rotor cover to reveal the three rotors and the reflector to the left of the rotors. Each rotor is used to scramble the 26 letters of the alphabet with a different letter. When you pressed a key on the keyboard, the signal of this letter first went to the plug board, where the letter could be swapped with another letter. I'll show this later. From there, the signal went to the right-hand rotor, where it was swapped by a wiring and then went to the left via an electrical contact into the middle rotor and was swapped again there. Then via another contact to the left-hand rotor, also with scrambling of the letters. From there it went into the reflector, which also swapped the letters. Then it went through all three rotors again from left to right. Seven substitutions were therefore made in the rotors and the reflector. The scrambled letter was then sent through the plug board again via a cable connection, with a possible further swap and then routed to the display panel, where it was displayed as a secret letter with a small light. You can remove the rotors to set a different coding combination. To do this, press the release to the left of the reflector. There is another box with two more rotors, so there are five rotors in total, three of which can be inserted in any order. There are a total of 60 possible combinations for inserting the rotors. In addition to the rotors, the Enigma has a plug board at the front where two letters can be swapped with each other before they are sent to the rotors. For example, X is swapped with N. If a letter is not connected to another letter, it is sent unchanged to the rotors after being entered via the keyboard and is only encrypted there. With the plug board, the cryptographic strength of the Enigma was massively increased. We will now remove the connection between X and N again for now and return to the plug board later. A secret key table containing the key settings for each day of the month was distributed to users each month. Let's assume that today is February 19th. We would then find the key settings valid for today in the row date 19. The encryption settings consist of three parts. First, the position of the rotors, i.e. which of the five rotors we have to use and in which order. For the 19th, these are rotors 3, 5 and 2. Second, the ring position on each rotor. This indicates how each of the rotors used must be rotated in order to have a different setting for each day. For the 19th, this is ring position 06 for the left-hand rotor, 22 for the middle rotor and 05 for the right-hand rotor. Third, the plug connections, where 10 letters are swapped with 10 others. The last column contains three-digit abbreviations that are sent in the message header to indicate which day's key was used for encryption, e.g. the current day's key or the previous day's key. This enables the recipient of the message to recognize how to set his enigma in order to decrypt the secret message. Initially, rotors 1, 2 and 3 are inserted. For the 19th, we must therefore replace them with rotors 3, 5 and 2. Rotor 3 goes to the left. Rotor 2 goes to the right. And rotor 5 goes in the middle. Now we have to set the ring settings for the three rotors. We look at the key slip again. For the 19th, it gives the ring settings 06, 22 and 05. There is a pin at position 01 on the rotor that we need to unlock. Then we can turn the ring to position 06 and lock it again with the pin. On the middle rotor, we also release the pin, turn it to 22 and then lock it again. Set 05 on the right-hand rotor. The rotors are now set correctly for the day. Now we put them back in. Then we can close the rotor cover again. Now we have to set the plug connections for the day. Let's take another look at the key settings. For the 19th it says HL, NT, EJ, OV, FR, ZK, SY, DI, WU and MG. Let's now open the plug board. The first plug goes from H to L then a plug from N to T. We connect E to J. O to V, F to R, Z to K, S to Y, 
D to I, W to U and finally M to G. The enigma is now set for the day. So we close the plug board again. Now we need to switch the machine on. The main switch is at the top right. Turn it all the way to the left and the enigma is on. If we want to encrypt a text, we have to write down the ciphertext so that we can send it later. There is a clipboard for this, which we can open using the clipboard button. Now we could actually start encrypting. However, the messages were not simply encrypted with the daily key, but each message had its own message key, which the sender was free to choose. The message key is the position of the three rotors before the first secret character is entered, and which the recipient must also set later in order to be able to decrypt the encrypted message again. We make it easy for ourselves and choose X, Y, Z, i.e. the last three letters of the alphabet, which is perhaps not a good idea. But we'll do it anyway. X is the 24th letter, Y the 25th and Z the 26th, which corresponds to the settings 24, 25 and 26 for the rotors. We have to transmit this message key in encrypted form in the message header, so that the recipient receives it for decryption, but someone else cannot read the setting unencrypted. To encrypt the message key, we use the day setting of the enigma with a basic position of the rotors, which we can also choose freely. We make it easy for ourselves again and select the basic position ABC, which corresponds to the rotor setting 01, 02, 03. We now open the rotor cover and set 01, 02, 03 for the basic position ABC. Then close the cover again. Now we can encrypt our message key. I type in X and get S. Then Y and get I. And finally Z and get O. So SIO is our encrypted message key XYZ. In the message header, we later send ABC SIO which the recipient can use to decrypt the message key. Now we have to set the message key XYZ in the rotors. Open the rotor cover and set 24 for X, 25 for Y and 26 for Z. Close the lid again. We now also empty the clipboard. Now we can finally start encrypting. However, we only have 26 letters and no special characters on the keyboard, not even a space. X is used as a word separator. In addition, every CH in plain text, which occurs quite frequently in German, is replaced by a Q to achieve a better frequency distribution of the letters in plain text. Here we go. Ich bin in Singapore. I'm in Singapore. Das Hotel ist mega. The hotel is mega. Dar es der Berimter swimming pool. There's this famous swimming pool. It's quite humid here. Das ist das Gala by Solchen Veranstaltungen. That's the great thing about events like this. Dartrus do God und die Welt. You get to meet God and the world. Und ich hab diesen Schneider heute getroffen. And I met this guy Schneider today. Das ist der Nachfolger vom Wildbarg. This is the successor to Mr. Wildbarg. Wann ist deine Reise nach Alaska? When is your trip to Alaska? The ciphertext is now ready. To be able to send the message, we need the message header, which is prefixed without encryption. 
It consists of the time. For example, three minutes before midnight, this is two, three, five, seven, followed by an equals sign. Then comes the number of parts into which the overall message is divided. For example, five parts. Five Tiley in German, therefore five TLE, followed by an equals sign. Next, which part of the message this is? This is the first part. Tile means part in German, therefore 1 TL followed by an equal sign as separator. Now we provide information on how many characters the secret message consists of, including the five-digit letter code group. With this information, the recipient can recognize whether he has received the complete message. In our case, there are 286 characters. Then comes the six-digit ABCSIO transmission key with the three-digit basic position at the front and the three-digit encrypted message key at the back. Now there are five letters before the ciphertext, namely two letters that we can choose freely and that have no meaning. We choose the letters FG at random. This must be followed by one of the four key groups of the day, which the recipient can use to recognize whether the key setting of the current day or perhaps that of the previous day was used. So let's take another look at the key table. The 19th contains the key groups AJJ, KLY, OVP and SBR. For example, we take the last one and add the five letters FGSBR in front of our ciphertext. The message with message header and ciphertext is now complete and can be sent. This is what the radio with Morse key is for. We switch the radio on using the main switch. Turn the main switch one position to the right and the radio is on. Then we have to set a frequency range, for example 3400 Hz. Now we can send the message as Morse code using the Morse key. Dot dot dash dash dash, dot 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 dash dash, dot 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 dot, dash dash dot dot dot, and so on.